Meditation is a skill, and as with any skill, you want to watch very carefully what you're doing. In this case, you start out by not doing much. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths, and ask yourself, where do you feel it in the body? We're not talking about the air so much as we are talking about the sense of movement in the body as the rib cage expands, the abdomen expands, the shoulders go up. And you may feel flow of energy in any part of the body, actually. Where do you notice it most prominently? Focus your attention there, and then try to keep it there. One way of making it easier to stay there is to make it comfortable. So ask yourself, is the breathing comfortable? Could it be more comfortable? You can try it longer or shorter, heavier, light, lighter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. Experiment for a while to see what kind of breathing feels good. Now, in watching yourself, you have to watch the breath, and watch the mind watching the breath at the same time. Because just because you have the intention to stay here doesn't mean you'll be able to stick with it, because new intentions keep coming up with every breath. And you want to make sure you stick with it, your original intention, which is to stay. This is the training part of the meditation. And there will be other thoughts coming in the mind, but you don't have to pay them any attention. Sometimes, in fact, if you try to chase them away, it gets worse. Think of yourself following a thread in a tapestry. There are lots of other threads, but you've got one particular thread you're interested in, so you follow it through as it goes through different designs, different parts of the tapestry. Don't have that kind of focus. That doesn't mean, though, that the focus is one pointed. You will have one point that's more prominent than the others, but you want to have a sense of openness in the body. Because if you make it too one pointed, it gets oppressive to the breath. So you want to think of openness. As the breath comes in, goes past that spot and asks, feels comfortable, and think of that sense of comfort suffusing throughout the body. That's the skill. You're trying to keep in the mind a large frame of reference right here, the body as a whole. Breathe in a way that feels energizing if you're feeling tired, in a way that feels calming if you're wired. And if the mind slips off, just keep coming back. Because if you're going to master this as a skill, you can't get easily defeated. This means you have to want to do this well. That's the first of the bases of success that the Buddha taught. There is such a thing as a good meditation, a successful meditation. Just as there's such a thing as a meditation that doesn't go very well. The important part of making the meditation good is that you want to do it well. And you maintain that desire. You stick with it. Whatever needs to be abandoned in order to maintain the desire, you let go of it. Whatever needs to be developed, you develop it. That's the next of the basis of success, which is persistence. You stick with it. And then come the two factors that make this a skill. Intentness, which you pay full attention to what you're doing. You're not just going through the motions. You try to be with each breath. And notice, be sensitive as you can to how this feels. 
sitting here breathing? What kind of breathing would feel good right now? That's the last of the basis of success, as we analyze things. Use your powers of analysis and ingenuity. If something isn't working, we'll try to change it to something that, that does. These two factors working together. The intentness, where you pay careful attention to what you're doing, and your ability to figure out if it's going well, if it's not going well. If it is going well, how do you maintain it? If it's not going well, what do you change? Those are the qualities that turn this into a skill. Because we're trying to make a difference here. If you're with the breath for a little bit and then wander off someplace else, then wander back, wander off. It doesn't really make a difference in the mind. It just becomes one more thing to focus on. You're trying to give the mind some experience in what it's like to stay with one thing continually. If there's any trouble, think of those four bases for success. One, really wanting to do this. And the desire is not just a brute desire, it's, it's a skillful desire. That's why it contains some, some discernment. You focus your desire on the causes. You're being mindful, being alert. Or as the passage just said, in terms of right concentration, you have directed thought and evaluation. You direct your thoughts to the breath and then you evaluate how things are going. And then the results are going to come sense of ease, sense of well-being, sense of refreshment. You don't have to create those. Those come as the mind settles in. It feels at home here. It feels comfortable here. So the desire and the persistence, you stick with it. And you pay full attention. You find yourself going back and forth among these different bases for success. At any one point, one of them may be prominent. But the important thing is that you have at least one of them, and then the others will come. So focus on the causes. The direct of thought, the evaluation. The evaluation encompasses both the intentness and using your powers of analysis. You ask yourself something very simple. Does it feel good to be here? What could make it feel better in terms of the way you breathe, the way you focus on the breath? That's one of the nice things about concentration practice. It's meant to be pleasant. It's meant to feel good. Because there's a lot of work that needs to be done in the mind. And the concentration, as the Buddha said, is the food that keeps you going. It's the place where you can rest and gather your strength. And in its challenges that it presents in learning how to get the mind to settle down and stay here as you try to figure out when the mind is not here, how you can bring it back. It has the beginning of the discernment that you're going to need in order to see through problems of the mind. The big problem, as the Buddha said, which is that we want happiness and yet we cause ourselves suffering. There's a blank space there in the mind someplace where we don't see the connection between what we're doing and the stress and suffering we're causing. If you can solve that problem, you've solved everything that really needs to be solved. But it takes strength, because you're going to be dealing with a lot of defilements, things that come up in the mind 
And of course, they're your thoughts because they're coming up in your mind. And you identify with them. And oftentimes go with them, as the Buddha said. Craving is our companion. It whispers in the air. It says, do this, do that. And we're so used to running after what it has to say. We think it's our friend. If we don't think it's us, we think it's our friend. Now to change that understanding is going to take a lot. But in particular, it's going to take a sense of well-being, because a lot of insight comes in seeing where you've been doing things that were really not very wise, sometimes very foolish. And if the mind is in a bad mood and is feeling strung out, it's not going to want to admit its mistakes. But if it's feeling nourished and at ease and comfortable with itself, then it's a better position to see its mistakes and to admit them and be able to do something about them. So this is the foundation. This is the food. This is your place of rest. This is your home. Look after it well.